go. Recording in progress, everybody. Okay, so this is for the public, for other people who want to understand. Thank you, Asa, for suggesting it. I'm Chris Kreitjo. I'm a software engineer at LinkedIn working on Ember's TypeScript support. This is Asa. Asa is a link software engineer at LinkedIn working on LinkedIn's TypeScript support. And he wanted to understand some of the things about what shenanigans we're doing in Ember. So I'm going to start by walking through what our publishing infrastructure looks like, because I think that'll actually be interesting to a lot of people. And then I'll show what the process of publishing a new package looks like um, from our stable types. So number one, I have Ember.js up here. This is just at the tip of the master branch. Uh, and I'm looking at our types publish MJS script. Um, I wrote up a lot of comments on this, so you can read through this if you forget this and you want to look and understand how it works. We have a constraint with Ember that a lot of packages don't have and that I hope someday we will not have. And that is that the package you install is Ember source, but the public API for all of Ember imports literally zero things from Ember source. Instead, we import things from places like at Ember slash object or at Ember slash utils or whatever else. And the mono repo itself, the Ember mono repo, is actually organized relatively reasonably. You have packages slash at Ember. I'm not going to talk today about the fact that we have packages slash at Glimmer in the Ember source repo. Suffice it to say, there's some shenanigans there that someday hopefully will not be there, but not this day. Packages at Ember, you know, at Ember slash component, you can imagine is reasonably what you would expect. At Ember owner defines all the owner types and exports them and also re-exports things from what, an internal package. These packages are actually the same as the packages we publish. But what you get when you get Ember source on disk, when, when you NPM install Ember source, uh, is not that. If I go to Ember learn slash Ember API docs is a good example. And I zoom this in really big too, just like I did the other one. Um, and then I come over here, let's make it wider. And I say ls node modules slash Ember source. What you will find in dist, includes all of those packages in the end. Well, I say all, it includes some of those packages. And it also includes a bunch of pre-compiled things like an Ember template compiler import and an Ember testing import and all sorts of things. Not that interesting for our purposes. The thing that's actually interesting for our purposes is there's no way for TypeScript to understand how to resolve Ember source suddenly becoming at Ember slash object right out of the box, right? It's, it's not how node module resolution works. That's fundamentally how TypeScript's module resolution works. And so we needed some way to tell TypeScript, hey, here's what at Ember source looks like. And what we didn't want to do, or uh, at Ember slash object looks like from Ember source. And what we didn't want to do was say, ah, you dear user who's using Ember, please add a compiler options paths entry, which maps everything to a hidden location inside node modules. That's scary and terrifying, and it's not using the platform at all. It doesn't use nodes export map semantics, it doesn't use the proposed import map semantics. If we had import maps, it's a working group proposal that someday maybe we'll have, but we don't have today. We could actually solve this cleanly if TypeScript implemented it. But instead, what we need to do is say, okay, TypeScript, when you generate that output, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say rm-rf type slash stable. It's already empty. Okay, we haven't done anything. So if I say types publish dot, uh, sorry, tsconfig, we have a tsconfig.json file that is specifically for publishing types. And this knows how to look up this knows how to resolve things it needs to internally. If I make this JSON C, things will be happier. Mm. Um, it has the right configuration. We're not going to emit anything other than declarations, but we're going to emit type declarations. 
We're not yet going to emit a declaration map with some of the stuff I've shown you in a moment. We could potentially do that if our code mod that's involved in publishing types, yes, a code mod involved in publishing types uh, did source map handling, but today it doesn't. We're just going to emit that into the type stable directory. So I'm going to run this. Um, and this is going to just walk the dependency graph for Ember's packages. This just extends the compiler options TS config. And this just wires everything up the way we want. Appropriate target, what our base URL and packages are. Um, this is wonky. Apparently, I have errors I need to fix on master. But if I look at types stable now, I've actually emitted all of these packages. So we're going to look at some of those. At Ember slash service is probably a reasonably good one because it's fairly small. So we just have a bunch of definitions for what the inject definition looks like. Notably, we're not getting any resolution for other Ember packages, though. Um, we have these other package definitions that theoretically we should be able to resolve. But over here in this area, there's no, like, it's in the same situation that uh, a, a normal consuming Ember package would be in. It has no idea what at Ember slash object slash internals is. And therefore, there's no type definitions for it. Because we live in a package named Ember source, not a package named at Ember slash service, referring to another package named at Ember slash object. So what we actually came up with to do here, and you can see this in the preview types that we shipped a few months ago, is we have an index that you import. So what we have you write is import ember source, which is the real package on disk, slash types and types preview, and these are mapped using export maps to the correct locations. Oh, uh, yeah, I've seen this, but did not uh -huh. know exactly what this was about. What this does is it imports these two modules, the stable index.js module, which doesn't exist over here yet, and the preview index.js module. And what these do is import modules themselves. They import paths on disk. So let's look at the preview Ember service module. This has a declare module statement in it. And the declare module statement means that anything which imports this path now has a definition for Ember service. And likewise, if I go over to Ember object, this has a definition for Ember object and imports for other things which are part of Ember object, which similarly have definitions which say declare module. So the top level types stable and types preview modules are just these side, list of side effect imports, which bring in a declaration into scope. So when you, a consumer, write import ember source slash types or ember source slash preview, you get these list of side effects, which then make the definitions which Ember creates for you at runtime as part of the Ember CLI build pipeline and be visible to TypeScript via these declaration definitions. Okay, so far so good. We hand wrote that. All of these were basically ported over from definitely typed and tweaked and fixed as much as possible to match the internals. But we now need to do the same thing for the types we publish from stable. Again, we're back in Ember service here, and this doesn't have a wrapping declare module. Just a clarifying question. So these types are uh, combined from definitely typed? So the preview types were all... I just took last early this year, I took and copied them all over out of definitely typed, put them in here as preview types, and then wrote all of those declare module statements, et cetera. And what I did when I pulled them over was say, okay, are there bugs in these? Are there fixes in them that we need to make as part of the work we're doing to stabilize Ember's types. For example, are there parts of Ember's APIs that we know from years of experience with the definitely typed types we can't actually provide correct types for? Mix-ins being a classic example here. We, we cannot provide good, accurate types for mix-ins because the type of the mix-in depends on the type of the mix-in. It recurses. So the type of the final thing you produce 
you want a getter in, or you want a method inside the body to be able to say what it's this is. Well, it's this is the type of the type produced by calling mixin.create. So then you have to refer to that type to be able to refer to other methods or properties that exist, et cetera. We just said no. As part of publishing stable types, we're not supporting that. Um, we're not supporting classic computed properties at all. Um, like the, the decorator, sure, you can use that, but we're not providing types that try to let you do the classic class style computed property, right? Native classes using getters, that's well supported in TypeScript, et cetera. And there were also just bugs. Um, I ported over from using definitely types um, DTS lint tool, which is built on TS lint and uses string expectation stuff to using the expect type library. Um, so if you look, this is a good, ex uh, apparently it's not a good example, type tests. Here's what in the world? This is the one I'm looking for. We use expect type of from expect type, which now vtest is also shipping out of the box because it's great for this. And it let us write better type assertions. Uh, this one's failing because I don't have the corresponding owner types generated yet. We'll see that in a second. Um, so there's no type definition for Ember owner because I've removed it from the preview types because we're publishing it as part of our stable types now. Um, but to make that work, we're gonna need a declare module statement for Ember owner. So net, we wrote these, we found a bunch of bugs by switching to expect type from DTS lint. So they're not one for one identical with definitely typed. They're relatively close, but they're not one for one identical. Um, does that answer that question? Perfect. So the next step is how do we make this visible? Because if I look at types stable ember owner index dot d dot ts, we have a def declaration file here, but there's no wrapping declare module. We need this to read declare module at ember slash owner, wrap that, and then we need there to be something which makes this import visible, the equivalent of the types preview one. And that is what the rest of the publishing script does. We wrap all emitted modules in a declare module statement. We do this with recast. Um, so that we actually are operating correctly on, you know, ASTs. We're not trying to do dumb string replacement. I initially implemented it with very dumb string replacement just to show, hey, this works and we can we can start doing this. And then I came back and re-implemented it that way. And then we have a list here of modules that are still in preview mode. So basically we say, we're gonna generate all of those files for you. And we're even going to rewrite all of those files for you using this declare module. But that index, which imports them, we're not gonna write those imports until we're ready to stabilize any given module. So we're in control of what's stable and what's still coming from the handwritten preview types. We ultimately want there to be nothing in the preview types and we'll delete that module entirely after some point in time. In the meantime though, the stable types, let me just run this and you will see how this works. So uh, preview or just kind of like the beta or alpha types? Yes, that's the right way to think of it. What are you doing here? Okay, YouTube. You get to have a fun moment of watching me try to debug why Ember.js stuff that's working in CI is not having a great time right now. Well, let's start by blowing away node modules and rerunning yarn. Um, worst comes to worst, let me also make sure I get pull I'm up to date. How do you choose to use the preview types versus the stable types? Critically, you don't. This is part of our migration strategy. You as a consumer are going to get whatever mix we as Ember say is stable versus preview. You import those two import paths, import Ember source slash types and import Ember source slash types slash uh, preview. Yeah. And as we migrate version by version, some things become stable. And once they're stable, we're committing to 
normal ember stability guarantees versus preview where it's like, haha, this might break right out from under you, right? And what we're saying is we're stabilizing once we think we're ready to stabilize. Um, and we're not obligated to do so at any until we're till we're ready. You as a consumer, you automatically get upgraded to the stable types as soon as they're available on an Ember version that you're using. You write that set of imports once when you upgrade to Ember 4.8, where it's all preview types. And then 4.9, still all preview types because we didn't have anything ready to publish yet. Ember 4.10, you're getting stable types for the Ember owner package. That's it. Ember 4.11, I'm hoping, we will be shipping stable types for everything. Certainly by 4.12, that's our goal. Um, so right now we're in the 4.11 alpha period. We have about four and a half weeks before we cut over to the beta period and we won't land new features then. So we have about 10 weeks total where we're trying to land these things. If it slips till 5.0, it slips till 5.0, but it'd be really nice if there were stable types available for 4.x users on the 4.12 LTS release. That's our goal. In the transition for a, a developer experience here from going from stable to preview is, in theory, you shouldn't notice anything. You should not notice. And in fact, we've gone out of our way to make it so that the type tests expose the exact same thing that you as an Ember user would see. So mm. if I collapse all of this and I look at type tests, uh, the layout is different because of where it's getting them. We're not using export maps internally to resolve them, but it's just importing from type stable and types preview. It's doing the exact same thing. So its view of the world right here is I'm getting whatever type tests covering whatever preview and stable are. Occasionally we find bugs, like I'm in the middle of working on publishing the stable service types, and that exposed a bunch of things in the internals where we were asserting things like Ember's own types were lying, um, like internal types were wrong. Um, and I caught that bug because we're using the definitely the type test that I wrote when I ported everything over from definitely typed. It's always a little wild when your type definitions that you wrote by hand are more accurate than the loosey goosey types that have been added to the code base itself, but that was reality. Um, so I think the problem was that we had a bad node version. I used Volta to pin a correct node version. So Yarn works now. So now I should be able to run types publish.mjs using MJS because anytime I can use ECMAScript modules instead I do. And this is gonna take a second, but what it does is it invokes TSC. Um, let me collapse this and also this. We'll come back to them in a second. Um, it starts by just running TSC against that publish types config that I showed a minute ago. Then it looks up all the module names from the types directory that we're emitting into, which is type slash stable. So over here now we have a stable directory. It walks all of those and it processes them. And processing, when I said I do a code mod, we do a code mod. <laughs> uh, it grabs the module path, it reads the file, if it can't read it, it returns a failure condition just so we know, hey, this one was a failure um, for that module name and allows us to report errors without falling over on everything else, which mostly just allows us to report all errors. If we do that, we do a console.exit or a process.exit one after dumping all of them. So it'll fail CI if that's broken, et cetera. Then for every module name, we get rid of index.d.ts if it exists because we are not going to admit that. You're not going to declare module at ember slash owner slash index.d.ts. You're just going to declare module at ember slash owner. And then we rewrite the module. So here we walk the AST and we find any declare module declarations because any other top level declare module declarations need to not be wrapped in declare module because you can't have a declare module inside another declare module. That's not legal. So we push those out and keep track of them as a list of other module declarations. You also can't have any declare statements inside a declare module statement. So any place that the source code has written declare, we just need to remove it. Um, and so we visit variable declarations, class declarations, other declare, function, uh, declare functions, import declarations. Uh, sorry, this is where we change mode. That's what all of these do. We remove declare from it. So we just walk the AST and be like, you got to declare, turn it off, go away, goodbye. Um, 
Then we visit all the import and export declarations and we rewrite them from being the um, relative imports to being uh, absolute imports. So if I was in, inside Ember internals importing from dot slash lib slash foo, I rewrite that to say I'm importing from at Ember slash internal slash lib slash foo so that it's a legal declaration in a declare module context because TypeScript says no relative imports in a declare module context because I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you relative to? You're declaring an absolute location in an arbitrary spot on a file system. I don't know what you are. I don't know what's relative to you. So we rewrite all of those as exports and that goes for- Dur name, yo. What? I say as a dur name, yo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we do that for dot slash foo, we do that for dot, and we do that for dot dot slash anything. Some fun in making sure you basically re-implement path mechanics correctly there so that your specifier gets to be what it is. And then when we're done, we just build up a new AST that says, hey, I'm going to have a declare module that wraps all of these things. And then I'm going to have any other module declarations I found. Um, so once we do all of that, then we run prettier on it uh, because of course we do, because we want the output to look reasonable. That's again, very dumb. You just write the file back out. And then when you're done with everything else we do, we write, we run prettier over the results. The in-between stuff is here. Here's where we say we're only going to add imports to this stable index dot d dot slash index dot d dot ts for things that we haven't said nope no op that you can think of this as a deny list it just says if it's in the list it doesn't get to get emitted so right now of all of those things we operated over the only things we actually emit declarations for are ember owner and the things it explicitly depends on from embers internals so we emit that and there's a declaration file which looks it's not quite what I would expect because prettier doesn't handle comments the way I would want it to, but it's better than not having run prettier on it. And it's just exactly what you'd expect. It's wrapped in declare module. That's actually all we do for publishing types, but it's, you know, it's janky shenanigans <laughs> because fake packages or rather real packages that, and I think this is an important point to understand. Ember implements the ECMAScript module specification itself. That's what Ember CLI is doing. Um, that's annoying at this point. When Ember implemented this in 2014, that was fine, right? No module resolution wasn't the de facto standard that it was by 2016. Um, when Ember did this, Bower was still a real going concern in the world, right? Um, it... It was fair back then. The main complaint I have is that we didn't move to a world where everything is actually node resolvable specifiers much sooner than we have. But these are real packages. This is a legitimate ECMAScript module implementation. It's just not one that literally anybody else uses and TypeScript has no idea what it is. So we do these janky things to make it work. So the process of publishing a new type, and this is kind of a long way around so that you understand ASA, but also anybody else watching this can understand, here's how I could contribute. Um, oh, that's the placeholder. So we just have, like we generate the stable index.d.ts and we have this placeholder that we string replace, right? That's what we're doing right here. We build up the list of things that we're going to replace. And then we just say, given the actual base file, dump this list of side effect imports into it. The side effect module, it's just, you know, it is this. So it's just a string version of that. So what actually publishing a new type looks like is, ah, let's say that I want to publish, there, you'd think that some of these would be pretty small, but you might be surprised, Ember Utils Index. How much? Do any of these use? So these are going to use Ember object and it's going to explode. Um, 
Ember Test is going to use a ton of internals. Template's going to use a ton of internals. Some of these things we're probably actually going to never ship, and we'll rename this from preview types to deny list. Like Glimmer Tracking Index. Mm -mm. We're not shipping that thing, at least as things stand. If we look at what this looks like. Are you saying that we don't want to actually provide types for that package? Correct, because you get the types for this package from Glimmer Tracking um which is weird oh so why don't we just pipe those types through right now that's a good question or is it just work that has to be done that's partly it okay. um you know the answer to the question i'm just I, i'm no, just i think it's actually good for, for that anybody doesn't who else watches this context. to know at Glimmer Tracking is a package that goes in your package.json. Like if I come back over here to Ember API docs and I look at package.json, right? Um, you can see that I installed Glimmer Tracking and Glimmer Component, right? Uh -huh. But Ember apps don't use this version of Glimmer Tracking. They use this version of Glimmer Tracking that we ship ourselves. Ember does magic for reasons. Um, so that you get, you have this package, but you don't actually use any of it. It special cases it that you do not use any of it at all. You do use the definition of Glimmer component that comes from at Glimmer slash component, but you use one specific definition of it. There are like two, I think that there's the one Glimmer JS uses and there's the one Ember JS uses. I would like that very much not to be true. I would also very much like it to be true that you just use the version of Glimmer tracking that you get, but for reasons tm we're going to leave it at that we special case that today we want it to be the case that you continue to get the version of the types that you get from glimmer tracking but and because we want to move that direction right we want to stop having ember have its own special shenanigans version of what glimmer tracking means um so we don't uh, want to talk about there. the actual source code or types yes um it the actual we want we want TypeScript consumers to continue to depend on the actual types from at Glimmer tracking, because ultimately we want the runtime consumers to do that too. Got it. Okay. Um, so at some point we will delete the at Glimmer slash tracking shenanigans that live inside Ember itself, and then we won't need this deny list because we won't be generating this fake shenanigans package anymore. But yeah, okay. most stuff in here, unfortunately, is. You know what? This will be illuminating, actually. Let's look. Well, Ember error would be a simple one, lol. Um, because this package does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I can demo the easy mode version, and we'll actually... Um, I'm, I'm going to make this a PR, because it'll be the easiest one I've had all week. Um, and I'm going to say node type. Uh, I'm in the wrong package. And run node type slash publish.mjs. Um, and this should generate the type definitions we want. And when we come over here and we look at index DTS stable, um, in a moment, it'll rewrite this. There you can see it did. We now import ember slash owner. And if I go to this, it's exactly what you expect. Winning! Um, so if I look at this and I say stable member owner type. I'm going to check this in. Um, I'm going to say feature at ember introduce stable types for ember error, which I would like to deprecate. Like you can see what the definition is, right? It's free exporting error. There was a time when that wasn't true, but <laughs> that's all it does today. So I would like it to stop existing. Um, but you can see how the flow works. You remove it from publish.js. Ah, there's one other piece. This won't correctly type check. If I say node, if I say yarn TSC, no emit project type check tests, we're going to probably, actually, they may be compatible definitions. So it may still do this. But we need to get rid of a couple of things. There's an Ember error definition here. Yep. So we have two definitions of this, right? We now have a types preview Ember error index DTS. 
I'm glad I made this mistake because it's the first mistake anybody else who tries to do this will also do. Um, but it was also declared by the stable one, right? So we're right. gonna come over here and we're going to go to this file and in fact, that whole directory and delete it and delete the import. And now if we run the type tests, it should pass because so you we've are... removed the preview types version of it in favor of the stable types version of it. We're stabilizing it. You were asking. Sorry, you, you, did you, where did you get the stable types from? Did you just copy over from preview or did you pull them from somewhere else? I missed that. No, part. ah, that's a good question. So I said this earlier, but I said it very quickly. If we look at the script, what we're doing is running TSC against our published types.json. And published types.json is publishing types from Ember's source. So it is running against the actual Ember source definitions. And that's why it's not all stable yet is because some of Ember's source definitions are, as I mentioned as an aside earlier, janky and wrong. Um, okay, and then can you go to the source definition again that we generated, mm -hmm. that you generated the error yes. from? Yes, so if I look at, at Ember error, this is the definition we generate. And then if I say code type, uh, code packages, well, was it, do it here. Where error was that generated error. from though? Was that hand rolled or? No. This comes from error index.ts. So here's the actual module. This is in packages at ember slash error slash okay, index.ts. Right. So it's right. just, a, you know, in this case, it's trivial. It has one export. The actual generated DTS file initially was exactly the same. Right. And then we wrapped it in declare module. But in some That's cases, it. the source types might be hand rolled. No. Oh, so the why was types janky and not able to? Let me show you a good example. I'm asking a lot of naive questions. No, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very important question. Um, which package was this in? This was in deprecate. So I was working on this earlier today. Um, and it's, it's this one. Uh, so right here is a perfect example. There is a an import from the Ember debug package called register. This is generic register handler, which gets exported, I think again, as um, register handler um, for deprecations. So if I go all the way up, well, I can just pull up dash and say um, register deprecation handler. You can see this import exists, right? Import register deprecation handler from Ember debug. We document that there's an options object. If I go back to the definition here in handlers, we document that there's an options object, which is passed to this register handler. Um, the handler shape is, gets a callback, which takes a message and options. Options is typed inside Ember correctly, but not usefully. Uh, it is typed as, object, which is like, aha, hand me an array, I'm happy. Hand me a number that you have conversed with the number constructor, I'm happy. Hand me a Boolean that you've, can hand me a typed array, anything goes here. Not useful, right? Whereas actually the preview types here, um, so sorry, types, preview, debug. If I look at this and I look at what register deprecation handler is typed as, it actually has the correct types because we read that the way these got written over the years is every time an API came out, or for most of them, when we started writing types five years ago, we went and reread all the docs. Oh gosh, it's been almost six years. So long. Um, we read all the docs and we were like, ah, this takes options. So what are the options? And we wrote the API correctly accordingly. Um, Ember's own types were usually converted in, you know, Chris Santero did this a few years, props to him for doing some of the work. It was a, let's make some progress. Yeah. Most folks yeah. who've done TypeScript conversions know that this is how it goes. Your, your job is rarely, ah, let me take six months and go rewrite this library from scratch while implementing no new features so that it's all well typed. Yeah. It's just not how it works. And so here, Chris wrote something very reasonable as a first step and no one ever took a second step and it's been four years. And so what I was working on earlier is, okay, this should actually look like this. So I come over here and I add it 
and now everything else will be fine and I can regenerate these types accordingly. But the type test caught that because I was using the type test we wrote against the preview types. So it's not that the source code isn't in TS in general. There are a handful, very small number, like fewer than a dozen modules scattered around the Ember packages that aren't written in TypeScript yet. It's that sometimes the types themselves aren't ready to be published yet. And when we go to test them against the preview types, we discover, ah, this is typed incorrectly internally. Our public API says this field is optional and internally we treat it as required. Okay, let's fix that. Um, or it's not specific enough or whatever the case might be. So it's fixing up things like that and then going ahead and emitting them correctly. Um, the other thing that gets interesting, so I'm going to uh, revert, get restore that one. So this is back to being just an object um, and delete those, add dot and amend, see, a, yep. So we're gonna check in with the same error and I'm gonna push it. Where things get interesting for would-be contributors? Please come contribute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say I do what I wanted to do, with, which actually got me down a bunch of these rabbit holes. Um, let's say I wanted to just publish the Ember modifier because Ember modifier looks like it should be pretty small. Probably these are external packages, right? This one might be interesting. It's coming from internals, but this one's at least coming from external packages. So that seems fine. Okay, so let's... Let's turn it on, let's delete that. And we'll say node types publish. So it's gonna do the same thing. It's a little slow, wish it were faster, it's fine. The cycle time is not terrible. So you just flip gonna... from stable to, or from preview to stable. Basically, yep. Um, and I would have to also go over to here and remove modifier, but boom, now it's stable, cool. Except that if I say yarn, so on the type test, it's going to complain very loudly. I know because I did this a week and a half ago and it complained very, very loudly. Um, and I'll be able to publish this probably tomorrow. But it's like, hey, these things don't match up. Our type tests say that. And it's because this has no exported member on modifier. Well, why not? So I go over here and I look at the actual emitted code, right? And I say types, stable add ember slash modifier slash index dot d dot ts. Well, it, it looks like it should. Uh, oh, it's actually because this package doesn't exist. Okay, so, so I need ember internals glimmer to be published to be able, oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, <laughs> that's a lot of packages to publish. Um, so, okay, I do this and I delete all of those. There are no corresponding preview types because these are all internals. So I'm going to run publish.js. And basically at this point, the cycle becomes, okay, for every one of these modules that I want to publish, a top level module, which of the internals do I need to publish to make that work? What I'm actually probably going to do um, either later today after we wrap this call or tomorrow is just publish all the internals. Just do the work to get all of those published and type checking. And that'll mean that slicing off the others becomes much easier. Again, if I now write, okay, so I published it. This type should now exist. Um, I don't need to open the right thing for TSC to see it, but it does actually exist. So if I come back over here to, hey, you can see it running in the background. Wait for it, code mod, code mod. Oh, I did the wrong thing. That was silly. <laughs> I uncode modded it. Uh, you will see it code mod itself into the correct state in a moment here. Um, so it's going to emit and it'll look like this. And then we will run the code mod on it and it will wrap it in declare module. So it emitted. Now it wrapped in declare module. Um, and then you saw it run prettier on it and it didn't need to change anything. Um, this now has imports for all of these. So this should now exist, and so it does. So here's the Ember Internals Glimmer module. Now the question is, what does this depend on? Uh, this depends on a bunch of internals Glimmer stuff. Um, 
and Glimmer opcode compiler, and that may be it. So this one may actually work now that I fixed all these other bugs. Um, if I yarn TSC the type tests, this is what I meant to run a minute ago. This would be kind of exciting if this just worked on air, live, because I fixed all the bugs that prevented it from working last week. Nope. <laughs> This is doing something really interesting and janky, and I don't know what yet, and I'll have to go look it up. Um, also, we're not publishing Ember Object internals yet. Um, but oh, look, somewhere in Ember internals lib components text area. So if I go look at that, this is presumably doing something I don't. So what's happening here is it has an export default, which is just exporting the def the result of calling another function. And that needs to be able to name this type. And this will all be fine if I go look at now stable ember internals glimmer lib components text area. So this is using a, I just found a bug in the thing because I didn't know we were doing anything that would trigger this. When you do something like that, TypeScript emits this for its declaration. Uh, remembering that this file originally just looked like this, right? Um, this was the original shape of that declaration. It was doing this because it was saying, I don't actually have a good name for this type. It's not a type that you've named as an import. It is specifically something that this has and is not re-exported here. So it would actually be wrong for me to re-export that type as such. The type export internal, uh, opaque internal component constructor is not named as an export from text area. So I TypeScript am not going to do it, but I need to be able to name the type. So I'm going to do that in terms of this. And so what I need to do is go say, okay, I need to update the code mod so that when it sees one of these, it rewrites it as, and this will work. I'll show you that it will work. Uh, it would help if there were a string literal there. Um, can't find that or its declaration. So if I look here, I open this file. Now it finds it, as you can see. Um, and that was just a have to update the TS server thing. So this is the kind of work that you have to do. And you can see in here, internals owner, it it's missing that. That one's that one's actually a lie. One of these other ones though was saying um, we're not we don't have the registry from internals container. So you just go back to publish types and add internals container, and you go back and you add object internals and things like that until you've basically carved off all the things you have to import to make the thing work. Again, I'm going to hopefully have all the Ember dash internals things published by the end of the day today or early tomorrow, which will make this much easier for everybody. But while we're working on the inter intervening stuff, you'll have to go say, hey, I need to go publish this and fix any type errors that it discovers for me and publish anything it depends on any type errors those discover. And the way you work it is you start by just getting all the imports to work. Um, anytime it says cannot find this, it just means we're not publishing that yet. Whoa, I just crashed iTerm. Uh, I think I discovered a bug. Um, that's the overview. I have talked for like, 45 minutes straight. Asa, do you have questions beyond those you've already asked? Because any questions you have, anybody else in the audience probably also has. So just to maybe summarize what I've uh, picked mm -hmm. up so far, um, there's a, a few types of things that could possibly be fixed. One of them is the code mod itself. Mm -hmm. One of them is updating the first pass Ember source types to match the more specific definitely type types when that is the thing sometimes we also find the other i should clarify or, okay so sometimes yeah. sometimes the type tests catch bugs in the ember source types which is the scenario i demonstrated 
Sometimes it's the opposite, where we publish types from source from Ember, and we realize, oh, these types we've had on definitely typed have been wrong for the last five years. Okay. Uh, so it's also, fixing it one way or another. I just realized I, I think I may have just assumed a few things in my head. Uh, mm -hmm. At what point did we? So it's my understanding that we, at some point Ember cut over to use types internally instead of pulling from definitely typed. Ember itself has never used definitely typed. So the cutover okay. is, uh, so Glimmer was written in TypeScript from the start, right? more or less. Hand-waved a couple months where Yehuda and Godfrey were working on it, writing like in the TS playground interfaces to talk about it and then working in JS. Um, and eventually they just cut it over. And because of that experience, folks started converting Ember itself to use TypeScript. Ember was written end to end in JS uh, because it was written originally, literally before TypeScript, um, and certainly before TypeScript was public. Ember's own internals have never referenced definitely typed anything. Okay. The key cutover is one: we are cutting over the community to use these types that we're publishing from Ember. The big Ember cutover is you can stop as of Ember 4.8, you can stop installing the types from definitely typed, just install Ember source and write those side effect imports, import Ember source slash types, import Ember source slash types slash preview, and everything just works at that point. Just works other than the rest of the ecosystem still depending on definitely typed in ways that are sometimes incompatible with the bug fixes we made. Um, okay. So that's the cutover. And then the next part of the cutover is instead of these hand rolled type definitions, which used to be undefinitely typed and are now part of Ember, um, we want no more hand rolling. We want to keep them permanently, perfectly in sync with the source by generating from the source. Yep. And that's what we're talking about here. And that's the work we're actually doing here, which would have been a helpful thing for me to say at the start of this video. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the, that question came from I had noticed recently. Uh, some Ember try configs, if they test an older version, will add a whole bunch of uh, Ember types, uh, types packages. packages. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. So that all makes sense now. And so yeah. basically, and that's actually pre Go ahead. Sorry. You have to do that pre 4.8, is what you said, right? Exactly. Right. So if you're a package that wants to publish types and support TypeScript consumers, and you want to support more than just Ember 4.8, which makes a lot of sense because that only became our LTS uh, last week uh, and technically only got the LTS two days ago, LTS tag on NPM two days ago. Um, you want to say, okay, I basically have a peer dependency, an optional peer dependency on at types, and I have a required peer dependency on Ember source, but I'm not going to force all my consumers to use Ember source 4.8 or higher. But I'm saying if you want to use me with TypeScript, you either need the at type slash Ember, et cetera, packages, or you need to be on Ember source at least 4.8. Yep. Nobody has ever tried this as far as we know. Um, like I've talked to some of the folks who maintain TypeScript and definitely typed, and no one has ever tried to do a gradual migration from definitely typed into publishing their own types. The reasons why are probably apparent. <laughs> it's hard. Um, but I think it'll net out to be good because there is actually a migration path for all of our users rather than just being like, good luck, and have fun. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this seems like a monumental effort and uh, you know, very appreciative for you, Chris, and all the other uh, folks working on Ember who are contributing to the TypeScript effort. So we... Uh, as someone who sort of blindly uses the output of your work, we are definitely appreciative. <laughs> well, I am happy that we are able to do it. And hopefully this helps it be possible for other folks to come chip in a little bit as we go. Working on packages that aren't Ember source is way easier because in general, you just publish your types. You can use Ember CLI TypeScript or for V1 add-ons, or you can use the official v2 add-on setup for TypeScript add-ons and publish type, that publishes types out of the box both so there's a clean easy path for both of those if you're doing normal things if you're doing shenanigans uh less less so but in general um if you're doing normal add-on things 
you can just publish types using either Ember CLI TypeScript for v1 add-ons or the rollup powered TypeScript config for v2 add-ons, and it'll just work for all your consumers. I think that's probably a good point to wrap it up unless you have other questions, Asa. Yeah, um, I'm sure I will have more later, but uh, yeah, this has been super helpful and uh, definitely a good starting point for getting um, hands dirty. Sweet. Anybody else who's seeing this, and I'll note this on YouTube when I upload it, um, reach out in Dev TypeScript in the Ember Discord, and I or Dan Freeman or James Davis or Peter Wagonet or any number of others, but especially the four of us, will be happy to help. So. Good luck and Godspeed, everybody. <laughs>